الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين And with this I conclude and pass it on to the next speaker which is a segue to the next speaker How about those who they're not even engaged in the sin but they're tempted they're struggling their internal desires are different than perhaps what many of us feel they're worried they don't know where to go they're worried because if they come to their family their friends they might be demonized they're going through perhaps issues of depression maybe even contemplating audu billah suicide which is very common and well known in that segment what do we do with them do we tell them to shut up do we tell them to don't talk do we tell them to not seek help Dear Muslims, if somebody comes to you struggling with any, any desire, not just this one, anything that's something that is not healthy to act upon, and they come to you for help, would you not have mercy and compassion on them? Would you not want to reach out and help them? Why then, and I'm being honest here, why do we not understand the same when it comes to this issue? Wallahi, if a person struggling with drugs came, with alcoholic came and said, I need your help, we would welcome them with open arms. We would embrace them. We would go out of our way, show them compassion and mercy. Why? I ask you why when somebody comes and says, I'm struggling with same-sex desires. I'm struggling with LGBT issues. All of a sudden, some of us, we become the most cold-hearted, callous people. How is this possible? They're coming for help. I'm not talking about those that are rejecting Allah, those that are trying to justify. I'm talking about those that want help from us. Why would we not give them help? Why would we not support them in every way possible? And that is why, dear Muslims, one of the people that I was very adamant on inviting, and I got a lot of flack for it, but I stood by this and I will continue to stand by it. One of the people I was adamant on inviting is a person who has dedicated his life to really reach reaching out to those who might internally be going through a lot of issues and they want to live their lives in accordance with the Sharia, ah, yet they don't know what to do. And this is of course brother Wahid Jensen, he is a pseudonym of an individual who has publicly written about his own struggles as a practicing Muslim who went through shame, who went through depression, even thoughts of suicide he had to overcome because no one wanted to help him out. No one wanted to give him some help when he came to them for help and he overcame this on his own and he then was, is one of the founders of an online forum called Straight Struggle, the goal of which is to help Muslims around the world remain faithful to the teachings of Islam and offer spiritual and emotional support to those who might need it. And with that, I want to hand over directly to our brother Wahid. We will have an open Q&A tonight after Isha. Please write your questions down. I'm going to hand it over to Wahid. Uh, Wahid, salamu alaikum. Are you online? Wa alaikum salam rahmatullah. Can you hear me? Alhamdulillah, we can hear you. Inshallah, the floor is all yours. So, bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Jazakumullah khairan, Shaykh Yasir. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. I want to extend my salams and say assalamu alaikum to everyone listening, um, to the EPIC committee, to all of the organizers of the event, to the speakers, Shaykh Yasir, to Imam Omar, to Brother Mubin and Sister Asma, and all of the audience members. Thank you so much for having me. It is a huge honor to be talking to you today. I appreciate the efforts um, to, to be an inclusive, to have an inclusive event and to include a voice from the inside. This is kind of unprecedented. So Jazakumullah Khairan for that. Um, I would like to also say that I really appreciate and I speak on behalf of so many Muslims struggling with same-sex attractions when I say Jazakumullah Khairan for moving forward with this event despite all of the um, black backlash and all of the negative uh, comments that have been surfacing for the past two weeks. This is much needed as Sheikh Yasser said, um, so thank you so much for going forward with this event. I know that there are a lot of mixed feelings in the audience right now, and I know how you might be feeling. I'm addressing a wide audience of so many different backgrounds and so many different beliefs. 
Um, but I just want to say from the beginning that I am one of you. I care about the Muslim Ummah, and I want you to know that we are on the same page. We want to move forward together and on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a general disclaimer, the goal is not to normalize anything not in line with Allah, with what Allah wants from us. I am committed to Islam and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I will explain, inshallah, and I am committed to help out. So my talk today is, inshallah, going to be a couple of things. I will share a glimpse of my story, the journey from a place of complete darkness to seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, alhamdulillah, to share with you how we as individuals who struggle with same-sex attractions, how we feel in our communities, um, to clear up some of the misconceptions that a lot of people have about us, and to reassure you that we are all working together and we are all on the same page, inshallah. And finally, I would like to end with some pieces of advice for individuals struggling with same-sex attractions, as well as all of their loved ones who want to learn how to handle this, in addition to the community at large. Um, so to begin with, I am a Muslim first and foremost, and I follow the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to the best of my ability. I have same-sex attractions, and I have had them for as long as I can remember. Um, as with a lot of people who have same-sex attractions, I have been through periods of Co intense and constant shame and confusion and pain and it took me years until I got to a better place mentally and emotionally and spiritually alhamdulillah and even during all of these periods never have I questioned the Islamic rulings that prohibited same-sex sexual relations um, allow me in the next few minutes to share with you part of my story from a very young age I knew that I was different in a sense I didn't know what that meant or what that was as a child growing up, I saw things differently. I had different perspectives. I behaved differently. I identified more with the opposite gender and the same gender to different degrees. I had so many questions. And then things crystallized around puberty when things became more sexualized and all of the raging hormones started kicking in and things became more obvious. During middle and high school, I remember I was constantly bullied not because anyone knew about me, but I was called names. I always felt inferior. I was constantly being shamed for being weak, um, not being too athletic or sportive, being too nerdy, etc. And I've internalized all of this and I kept it to myself. And as you can imagine, all of this would generate a lot of fear and shame and guilt. And I did not share any of this with anyone close to me because I was afraid first and foremost that I will be labeled or shamed or even looked at in a different light. Um, I was also afraid of telling my parents because I was afraid that they would themselves be ashamed or they would take it the wrong way and blame themselves. I did not know how to address this and I knew that a lot of people might not be able to answer me because they don't know, they, they just don't know how to deal with this. And I knew that telling anyone would be an irreversible act, right? So we cannot control the outcomes and we don't know how people are going to react. So it's so, it's something that you do once and it's irreversible. You cannot take it back. So it was a very confusing time growing up and I had so many questions racing in my mind. What is happening to me? Why is this happening? Does God hate me? Is he punishing me? Am I going to hell? I know that acting upon my attractions is wrong. So why do I have them to begin with? What kind of a trial is this? You know, and later on, um, Things became more profound given the current narrative that we, you know, the, the current socio political climate that we live in. If this is who I am, if this is my identity, then why can't I be who I am? Do I not have a place in Islam? Why does Islam reject me? And so, with this, I had more fear and isolation, and I was more confused. And when I looked up online, why am I feeling this way? The Islamic answer was always the same. You are not to be blamed for your attractions or desires. You are only blameworthy when you act upon them. Well, that's great. But for someone like me, so how do I move forward? How do I deal with this? And I was really frustrated with the community because I didn't have anyone to talk to. There were no support groups, no people to offer any help. Nothing explicitly that said, okay, we are here to offer our services or support or counseling or whatever. There was nothing like that. And if this topic was brought up in a Friday khutbah or in a, in a lecture or anything like that, the issue was discussed with, again, shame and anger and disgust. Some would lump us all in one category and they would call for the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
upon us or send us all to hell. Even though we didn't do anything, it was just a matter of attractions. And so the question would be, how are we expected to live a life that is true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if the rhetoric and the discourse are alienating and incredibly tormenting? And let me just say this clearly, no one chooses to be attracted to the same sex. It's not a choice. What we choose is how to react to these attractions. Of course, this is within our capacity. But we do not choose our attractions. It's something that we discover in ourselves, often to our own horror and shame and fear. And, and people need to understand something, which is that it's not a switch that we can turn on and off nor is it something for which we can just go to a few sessions of therapy or a few support group sessions or whatever there is and walk out of there, quote unquote, cured. It's not how it works. I've heard a lot of stories in my adolescence and early adulthood about people who dealt with these feelings. And again, I'm just talking about feelings and not acts. And they were going through very tough periods of time. And then they chose to tell others because it was just too much to bear. And then, unfortunately, they were outed, scandalized, hurt, abused, kicked out of the house even, shunned and disowned by their families. And this is very unfortunate. There are tons of studies published, scientific studies of high quality, that correlate same-sex attractions and, and people who identify as gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual, whatever, with trauma like toxic family dynamics, abuse of all kinds, physical, sexual, emotional, etc., bullying, and other problems. And so many other studies also correlate this with mental health issues. And I can attest to that because while we repress and repress over the years and we internalize all of the shame and guilt and confusion and anger, I had battled severe depression and anxiety and low self-esteem and even got to a point as Sheikh Yasser was mentioning when I had suicidal ideations and that was a very dark period of time for me. I went at some point to see a therapist and he was the very first person I would tell and I was 18 years old at the time um, and I told him about me and all of these things that I was battling and about my attractions and I learned that he was a pro-LGBT therapist. He was telling me to embrace who I am and just to accept it. And at the time I told him that this goes against my Islamic values and my Islamic teachings and this is not something that I want to do. I came to him telling him that I want to change. I don't want these attractions to exist anymore. And from his perspective, he told me that that is not a possibility. That cannot be achieved. And so we focused on the other issues like my depression and anxiety and other mental health issues and that helped, alhamdulillah. Now what I would like to ask you is to think just for a tiny moment and for everything, from everything that I've told you right now, imagine you were in my shoes or in the shoes of the thousands and thousands and thousands of Muslims with same-sex attractions around the world. How would you feel? As Sheikh Yasser Qadi mentioned, there are many ways that people deal with this. Some of them embrace the identity and leave Islam altogether. Some of them choose to reinterpret the Quran and the Sunnah and still say, okay, we're Muslims, but we want to kind of reinterpret this and we want to live out the lifestyle. And some of us accept Islam and we accept the teachings and we try to stay true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Islam, but we feel out of place we continue to repress and repress until eventually things blow up. So going back to how things worked out for me, after a period of therapy and after learning and, and reading more about this and getting support from friends, alhamdulillah, I wrote an article in 2015 and it was published, alhamdulillah, three times. I have received hundreds of emails from brothers and sisters all over the world who struggle the same struggle and who um, told me, thank you for speaking on our behalf. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you for shedding a light on this. And they were sharing their own pains and struggles with someone they didn't even know. And later I came across a lot of other writings and literature that showed me how loaded the terminology of gay and gay identity is. And I learned about the gay movement and I have also learned about 
a lot of efforts from the Christian and Jewish and even secular groups that are there to help individuals who struggle with same-sex attractions. And then I looked at the Muslim communities and again, nothing. An article came uh, out on Muslim Matters that was published in 2017. Um, or sorry, 2016. It was called From a Same Sex uh, From a Same Sex Attracted Muslim Between the Denial of Reality and Distortion of Religion by Brother Yusuf. And he happens to be the moderator of the Street Struggle Yahoo group. And just to correct Sheikh Yasser, if I may, I'm not the moderator, but he is, but I am a member of that group. Um, so I joined that struggle and I started communicating with hundreds of brothers and sisters in that group who struggle with same-sex attractions and they're all over the world. And alhamdulillah, that, since then, there's been a lot of growth and healing in the process. Um, last year, I started a personal blog to document my journey and to share the stories of, of other people. And uh, recently, I've started a podcast called Away Beyond the Rainbow. Um, we have so far published three episodes. It's a weekly podcast that publishes every Friday, and you can listen to it on Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and other applications. Um, what we hope to achieve from this podcast is to address the struggle of Muslims with same-sex attractions who want to live a life true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Islam, who, uh, and, and to try to address the matter comprehensively from a psychological and spiritual and familial and social angles and we are also um, targeting families and siblings of individuals who struggle with this, as well as imams and community leaders, because we want to work together and address this issue effectively, inshallah. And I would like to take this opportunity to send a message to people who might be in the audience right now, who are in the closet, so to speak, who are in a very dark place, just like I was a few years ago, who might even be contemplating suicide, God forbid. I know I don't have much time to talk about this um, as much as I would love to, but let me just say this, it gets better, I promise. I was in your shoes and it was a very dark place. I'm not belittling this at all. I know how it feels. And to tell you the truth, many of us were in that dark place. Thousands and thousands are actually in a much worse place, but they were in a much worse place, but now they're in a better place, alhamdulillah. And many of us are here for you I am here for you if you want to talk. My contact information is available, inshallah. Please do reach out to me or to others online. We are all here for you. Yes, you do have a place in Islam. Yes, you can live a righteous life. And suicide or any kind of self-harm is not the answer. Please do reach out to us. Please do reach out to people you love and trust in your community. And we are all here for you. What I want to reassure the audience once again is that I am committed to helping Muslims who struggle with same-sex attractions to live a life that is true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Islam. And I have been doing so, alhamdulillah, for the past couple of years. The podcast mentions this loud and clear. And I have also men um, included a note at the beginning of the article that was originally published, which kind of generated a lot of controversy because I had used the term gay or homosexual as a noun to describe myself. And I have obviously abandoned this loaded terminology after knowing what that stands for. And um, for anyone asking, is there a difference between saying I am gay versus saying I have same-sex attractions? Yes, there is a world of difference. It makes a big difference. And I will address this, inshallah, in the podcast because I don't have time to talk about this right now. Um, and for those of you wondering, I, I have received some comments. If, if assuming that I am calling for same-sex attractions to be a new identity category. No, of course not. I'm not calling for that to be openly recognized or discussed or acknowledged through events or posters or signs. People are really afraid of this. No, this is not what we're calling for. The idea is that people would have awareness of the issue so that they can deal with it correctly. The whole reason I, I am using a pseudonym to begin with is because I'm not public about this in my daily life. I do not wear this on my sleeve. I do not identify with this. And it's not my identity with which I go out and meet the world and work and interact and so on. And I am not calling for this to become an identity, but it is a real issue. And there are very real challenges that people like me who have same-sex attractions face. And these issues need to be dealt with maturely, like we do hopefully with other issues in our communities. And let me tell you this, believe it or not, 
a huge number of Muslims with same-sex attractions want to live a life that is true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and Islam. And we reject the notions of the gay movement that contradict Islamic values and teachings. And it's a big slap in the face when we see the Muslim community leaders or Muslim activists calling for accepting the gay identity and following the liberal and progressive movements that call for that, or to accept homosexual behavior and reinterpret Islam, or to call for the acceptance of gay marriage and just blatantly melt in whatever movements are out there without going back to Islam and seeing how all of this fits with the Quran and with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, what is right, what is wrong, and to try to hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it means to be politically incorrect nowadays. And you know what's a much harsher slap in the face? Is when our very own people, the Muslims that we turn to, when we are in our darkest hours, when we try to reach out for them for support and help, when we are suffering and struggling, they are the first people to cast a stone. Again, I know that the audience is mixed. I know that people come from different beliefs and they stand on this issue and in so many different ways. They have all sorts of different ideas and preconceived notions. I am here to speak on behalf of myself and on behalf of the hundreds and thousands of Muslims in my shoes around the world who believe what I believe in. And I understand that this is a very complex topic nowadays. You will be labeled no matter what you do or say when it comes to this topic. I have been labeled in the, in the past two weeks on social media when people found out that I am attending this event. Um, you can just see random posts from Muslims who were, were saying that I'm a border, borderline kafir or not even a Muslim and I'm going to hell anyway. And then you go to the opposite extreme of you know, the ultra progressive pro LGBT Muslims who say that I have internalized homophobia and I am harming people and standing in the way of their true happiness and all of that. So we will be called all, all, all sorts of things, but it's okay because what matters is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we keep moving and working for his sake and he will take care of everything and he will take care of the rest inshallah. So with that, I come to um, the last part of my topic for today or my talk, which is some practical points for people who struggle with same-sex attractions and for their loved ones who are listening who really want to help. Um, in the first episode of the podcast, I talked about notions of empathy and compassion and listening and understanding. And I was criticized for that by some Muslims, saying that you're preaching for what the LGBT people are calling for. And this is kind of loaded terminology. And my response was, how does that even make any sense? Let us reclaim these terms, because isn't what Islam isn't this, isn't this what Islam is all about? Isn't Islam about mercy and love and compassion? As, as Sheikh Yasser mentioned, um, Islam is about all of that and, and at the same time being firm with the truth, truth with a capital T. True mercy and compassion are not separate from the truth. Allah is the source of all of, the, all of this. Allah is the source of the true love and mercy and compassion. We cannot discuss these themes without Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. So being compassionate and merciful is standing up for what is right and upholding the Islamic principles and values. And our happiness and peace and serenity in this life and the next are by holding on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if I may say, had it not been for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his love being connected to him, knowing that he is the all merciful, the all forgiving, I would have lost my path a long time ago. Muslims haven't made it easy at all, and the other side hasn't made it easy either. So, by Allah, this is a very tough trial, and I know that. Particularly in this time and age, it's not easy at all. It's a trial that brings one to their knees in complete pain and weakness and brokenness. And I know for a fact, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, that choosing Him over everything and everyone is an act of courage and strength. I remember in the darkest point in my life when everything was falling apart and I was, I was about to give up completely. At that point of giving up, I spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I told him, Ya Rab, I give you everything. Aslam tu laka. I give you everything. I cannot do this anymore. It's too much to handle. And I asked him to take care of things. And he did so 
and he continues to do that, alhamdulillah. Now, looking back over the years, I realize how much I have learned and grown, alhamdulillah, in so many ways by walking down this path, which is very difficult. It has not just been about unmitigated pain and suffering and self-torture, as some people say. But I have grown and developed spiritually in ways that I could possibly not have achieved otherwise, alhamdulillah. And I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that, first and foremost. Many people along the same path, they share this view as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals each of us a different hand. But everything in life we go through is a rope from him that we can grab onto. And if we respond properly, we can use that rope to climb back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many Muslims have found Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this struggle in particular? And it is, again, a very difficult one. So to people who are listening who struggle with this, my heart is with you. There is a light at the end of the tunnel and one can reach a place of peace. It is a journey. What matters is not the destination, but actually walking this path, and Allah will take care of the destination, inshallah. I cannot stress the importance of having a relationship with Allah, a strong relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what. Forget everything else. Forget everyone who says otherwise, no matter what they say. And for the members of the audience who are parents, siblings of, of individuals struggling with this, for imams listening, for anyone. You want to know how to reach out and make a difference? There is a four-letter word that is very profound, which is love. That is what we are all, that, that's basically what we're all looking for. We all want to love and be loved. That is what this struggle is all about. We are looking for pure and unconditional love. That's all there is to it. So what I'm asking for is the need for all of us to work together to strike the right balance between, as my dear brother Yusuf said in his article, the denial of reality and distortion of religion. We need to find that Islamic middle path of moderation. This is a critical moment for us as a community, and we must get this right for two reasons. We must get it right for the sake of those who struggle with this, who want us to remain true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deen. And we must work together to speak the truth compassionately and wisely in a world that has become hostile to it, or doesn't want to hear, or is incapable of comprehending this. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, ادعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن. Invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and good instruction and argue with them in a way that is best. We choose to follow what Allah has revealed because we know that He only commands us according to what is best for us in this world and the next. And He gives us what we are capable of handling, inshallah. Success and true happiness and peace can never come through disobeying our Creator. Success and true happiness and beauty and wisdom and everything that we strive for, they all lie in full submission to His will, which is the very meaning of Islam to begin with. And this ties all of us together. We are all struggling together on the straight path, as sirat al-mustaqim, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all have different struggles that we're dealing with. So what I invite people to do is to learn more about the struggle, to learn about how profound it is. Um, one place to start is the Straight Struggle Yahoo group, the online Yahoo group. There are hundreds of brothers and sisters, as I've mentioned, online. There are many resources available for any individuals looking to learn more about this. There are a lot of blogs online from righteous people dedicated to Allah and his deen who struggle with this and who share their views and who share what worked with them, what didn't work with them. That's another place to look. Again, um, another initiative is the podcast that um, me and my friends have been working on. It's called Away Beyond the Rainbow, once again, for people who struggle with same-sex attractions and want to re remain true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deen. And we try to address this matter comprehensively, as I mentioned. And we also try to target the parents and the families and the imams and the leaders of the community. So what we're trying to say is that there is there's an importance uh, of, of communal understanding and support. And I call for all of the imams and the chaplains and the community leaders and any professionals and counselors, all of the parents and siblings and family members to actually come together to embrace their very own and to uphold the deen righteously. Listen to us. Sit down with someone struggling 
And I know that's very difficult. But sit down with someone struggling and just listen to what they have to say. Try and not pass any judgments and t try to drop any preconceived notions that you have. And try to show some understanding. Sometimes just by listening, you might end up saving someone's life. May Allah keep us steadfast on the righteous path and may he benefit the Ummah with all of our efforts, inshallah, and may he allow us to enter Jannah without punishment or account. Ameen. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak to you in this event. It's a huge honor for me, Jazakumullah khairan. And on behalf of all of my fellow brothers and sisters who are struggling with same-sex attractions, I thank you so much. Jazakumullah khairan and barakallah fikum. إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما